Now, for more on the China-EU summit and the future of the Global Climate Change Initiative, we're joined by current affairs commentator Ina Tangen. Now, Ina, as we heard there, China and the EU reaffirmed their commitment to the Paris Agreement during Premier Li's European visit. How does the U.S. pulling out affect the leadership picture on this issue? Well, Rochelle, this is a really a sea change moment. What you've seen is Donald Trump, who was not very keen on the EU, has, with one issue, united it and driven the EU to think very closely about its relationship with China. What you see here is, on one hand, the EU is trying to get its kind of mind around what the future will be with a much closer Belt and Road Initiative-focused uh, relationship with China. And China, on the other hand, thinking very carefully about the great power trap and this, that the U.S. went through, where you do not want the world's problems suddenly becoming your problems as a leading nation. Now, obviously, the climate change agreement and the U.S. pulling out, covering a lot of the headlines. But what are the other key areas of agreement that we saw stemming from the China-EU summit? Well, I, I think <clears throat> the major parts that are going to be important going forward have yet to be uh, decided. There was a three-hour delay where they were uh, talking about market access from the European point of view, overcapacity. But from China's point of view, they want to talk about uh, market-driven economy status. So this has yet to be done. But you could see quite clearly the contrast between a Donald Trump approach, a very, very awkward, uh, kind of a stiff approach that was almost uh, combative, versus uh, Lee's approach, which was extremely friendly. He was clearly seen backstage joking, even though they had not come to a full resolution. As I said, this is a cagey uh, negotiation between two great entities who have the ability to shape the world's economic trade future. Now, another area we see them taking a divergent approach is on this issue of globalization. So during this summit, how much progress did we see on the Belt and Road Initiative? During this summit, there was a lot of acknowledgement. If you look at uh, Juncker's speech, uh, the, almost the entire last part of it was uh, dealing with what the role of the EU could be in the Belt and Road Initiative. This was a very important uh, comment by him because it acknowledges that this is a look east kind of policy. Uh, he acknowledges over $60 trillion gap in what is necessary for infrastructure. He was talking about how the EU could participate, level playing field, etc. But as I said, all of these issues are really just coming to the forefront as the EU and China look at each other and realize that the future is going to be between them for their particular areas, and that the U.S. is taking an ostrich-like approach based on ideology not even supported by its business interests. The statements by IMELT, Bloomberg, by uh, Secretary Tillerson himself indicate clearly that energy, uh, manufacturing, and the information technology groups do not approve this, as do all the cities who joined in saying that they will continue to follow the climate accord. Now, despite the progress that we did see between China and the EU, both sides at the end were unable to issue a broader joint statement covering other issues at the end of the summit, especially with trade becoming a real sticking point. What happened there? Well, as I said, this was uh, really about uh, market economy status. China would like to uh, see this granted, not immediately, but to have a clear path to go forward with that. Uh, with the Europeans, they were pointed to the downturn in EU investment in China. They say that this is about access issues, that they want a fairer playing field. Uh, there's also this issue of overcapacity. Steel was raised, but there are other issues on the table. But the point is that do not get bogged down in the details. These are two great uh, powers who are looking at each other to create the future of, of uh, trade, not that is increasingly centered around Asia. We're certainly seeing a lot of uh, momentum in this relationship. Thank you so much. Our current affairs commentator, Thank Ina Tangent.